Alright, so we're letting the printer head cool down and we're going to put the motor back on here. And we're going to be kept our fan assembly all together. Sink. So none of the space, here's the spacer, see, none of the spacers came out. So we're going to push this back through. Went right in nicely. Oh, not too nicely because this thing stuck out. So. You gotta get these screws to seat inside the go through the print head. Let's try that again. together. There are the spacers. Try that again. Be more careful about pushing the screws. We go through the print head. That one's going in. There we go. Alright, so that's better. Then we'll push the motor from the back. Now we'll use our Allen wrench. This is the bigger of the two Allen wrenches. Screw one side in partially. Didn't lose any spacers that time, so I call that a win. And we'll screw this side in a little bit. It gets close. And we'll go back to the first side. Screw that in. And we'll get seated. Let's tighten up this one. Contact with our heat sink to the print head so it can cool it down as needed. So now we can plug our motor back in. You know, so that the printer turned off, that's always a good idea. Motor's back in, so now we'll turn it on and we'll load the filament. Alright, while the film while the uh, print head is heating back up to load the filament, we're gonna slide on our little short tube and we're gonna cut off at the end of this to get a clean into this using our nippers. Alright. Came off, okay. Put this back on. And then to load it, we're just gonna uh, put it in the hole and then push this little lever down until it seats. That should be enough to get it to load. So it's still heating up. Getting close down to our 205. And if it loads smoothly, then we're, all, we're ready to go, and we can go ahead and do the bed adhesion test. And hopefully this is the last of the clogging for this particular filament, because it's, clogging is super annoying, even though it's only happened to me twice. Uh, and now I'm pretty good, pretty good at fixing it, but it's still annoying, so try to avoid it at all costs. All right, almost there. Should start... Uh, Motor should start going any second now. There it goes. So I can feel the filament going in smoothly. You can watch it there. And then down below, you should be able to see it coming out. Yeah, so it's coming out smoothly. And hopefully we're good to go. That's a good sign for this temperature. Uh, the boundary looks pretty good. There's a little thin section over here. I'm not sure what happened to that, but I'm not too worried about it. So it looks like this is going to be a good temperature, but we'll have to wait and see. 
how the corners are here. So that just give you a little insight of what to look for. If the first layer is going down nice and flat, not blobby, that means your bed is level. And also uh, your bed temperature and nozzle is fusion temperature is probably pretty good. So. Alright, so our print looks pretty good. Didn't really have any heating problems, so maybe the clog is behind us, hopefully. Get rid of this uh, drip, drip line. So I think I've talked about this before, but the Simplify 3D software puts a uh, line of filament along the front of the bed here to get any uh, <coughs> droopy droopy uh, filament coming off of the print head as it got heated up. So that I like that. Some other techniques are to draw little uh, circles around the, the part you're printing. That's another way to do it, I guess. Anyway, this print's pretty good. The corners look well attached. And we'll see how hard it is to uh, get them off. It's not too hard to get them off. Then we'll um, just stick with our 45 degree temperature. We'll go to 40. I think for our next test we'll try 40. A little bit harder. I mean, it came off fine, but bottom looks really clean. Bottom looks really clean. Uh, top looks fine. This is actually printing quite well. So I'm encouraged by this filament, and I'll, we're going to go on to our fun print next. Like I said, I think we'll adjust the bed temperature to 40 from 45. Just make it a little easier to get off because I, I didn't notice any adhesion problems at all. So, all right, for a fun print, I found this on Thingiverse. It's called the Poly Pearl Tower, and it's got some stuff going on in the bottom here with some uh, little curves and other things. And oh, there's a bridge down here. I didn't notice that before. Some bridging over here, kind of a large area. That's interesting. And then it's got this double helix thing in the middle. That looks pretty cool. Then it's got it's a sphere with a cutout and some in indents on it. And it's got a 45 degree uh, legs here. So see if you can do that without supports. And then it's got uh, some cross supports on the helix. And it goes up to a point at the top. So I think this looks cool. And we're going to try it. Um, like I said, after our bed adhesion test, we're going to change our bed temperature to 40 or 45. So we'll change that, go ahead and update the profile for that. So this is our profile for printing this filament going forward. And the extruder temperature 205 looks really good. And but we'll, we'll be able to confirm that on this test. So if we have nice detail and uh, no stringing and other things happening, uh, we can uh, be happy with that temperature. I want to check. Uh, yeah, so we have this unchecked, so if you want to reduce stringing within your part, you want to uncheck this box. So normally this would be, uh, if it was checked, it would, it would, if you had printing multiple parts simultaneously, when it went from one part to another, or across an open space on a part, it would retract. But if you always retract on moves, then you're going to eliminate most of your stringing. That's been my experience anyway. All right, so this is good. And we're going to prepare to print here. And we'll see how many layers we've got, how long it's going to take. So there's 492 layers. That's a lot. Uh, but it's going to take an hour and 39 minutes. Let's let's look at the layers and see how they play out here. So. Yeah. So we have a 20% infill, which should be fine for this project. So you can see the... Not much infill on the helix there. A lot of infill here. And then you got the legs coming up. Those don't have much infill on them either. So. All right, so that, this will be a fun print, I think. So we'll go ahead and get that started. And we'll see, how it ha see what happens. We'll switch over to the time lapse. <laughs> Let's see how our tower turns out. 
change it to 40 degrees so we'll see how the adhesion works when we get underneath this thing. And this rounded one I don't think we can. I need to push this in there. Get under this. There we go. Yeah that's good adhesion. Just right. Okay, so we look at our tower. So our bridge pretty low bridge it looks pretty good yeah there's the bridge down there it's pretty low so it's not really as good a test as say the uh, um, temperature tower and then here's this s swirly uh, cut out here now the little pits on the lower sphere look pretty good. And yeah, the double helix looks really clean. I see some stringing in here. Some stringing right there. So that's not too bad. I can get that off. And then the tip. Tip printed really well, I think. Yeah, I'd say the biggest issue is some stringing in the middle here. Uh, but I would say that's not too bad. Alright, that's a fun little print. Let's see if we can get the whole thing in there. It's pretty tall. And uh, I think we're ready to start using this filament. Oh, I see. It's a, a little little uh, ramp coming out the front. I'm not sure if that's stringing or it's supposed to be there. I'll have to look on the model with these little, uh, it's a little hard to see, but the, in between this and the bottom there's some little lines. I think that's part of the model. Yeah, looks like it. Alright, that's it for the Amazon Basics Gold Filament. And so far, I think I'd recommend it. I'll have to see how it prints some other real things when I start doing short my course. So. A little addendum. Uh, when I started doing my real print here, it uh, acted like it was clogged up again, but I put the load filament process going, and then it seemed to clear it up. So this is a cheap filament, and uh, I'm not sure I'd buy it again, but as long as I can just do a load filament every time before I start, then it's fine. Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and i'll try to respond that's all for now but more videos are coming and if you want to see them please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one this is beta signi signing out and keep looking up